everybody, Chris here for Project Option, and in today's options trading strategies video, we're going to talk about the long butterfly spread. Now, in this video, it's going to be a little bit longer because it takes some time to explain the butterfly spread from both the perspective of call options and put options. Now, that's because a butterfly spread can be constructed with either all calls or all puts, and depending on which option type you use, the calculations will be different in some cases. So, let's get right into it. So the long butterfly spread is a limited risk neutral option strategy that consists of simultaneously buying a call or put spread and selling a call or put spread that share the same short strike. Now all options use the same expiration cycle and if, you're, if we're talking about a traditional long butterfly spread then the long options and short options should be the same distance apart. So an example of a call butterfly would be to buy the 100-105 call spread while simultaneously selling the 105-110 call spread. So as you can see, we're combining a long call spread and a short call spread that share the same short strike, and both spreads are five points wide. So this is going to leave us with one 100 call, two short 105 calls, and one long 110 call. Now we can construct the same exact position with put options by selling the 105-100 put spread and buying the 110-105 put spread. So in that case we'll have one long 100 put, two short 105 puts, and one long 110 put. So as you can see here the short strike has two of the short options and then we have a long option below the short strike and a long option above the short strike and those long options should be equidistant from the short strike if we're talking about a traditional long butterfly spread. Alright so let's talk about the strategy characteristics of the long butterfly. So first and foremost the maximum profit potential is going to be equal to the width of the long spread minus the debit paid times 100 and the maximum loss potential is going to be the debit paid times 100. Now the upper break even price is going to be different for long call and long put butterflies so let's get into the calculations. So if you have a long call butterfly spread the upper break even price is going to be the short strike plus the width of the long call spread minus the debit paid. So that's essentially the short strike plus the max profit of the long spread. Now the upper break even price of a long put butterfly is going to be the higher long put strike price minus the debit paid. Now in terms of the lower break-even prices, for a long call butterfly spread, the lower break-even price is going to be the lower long call strike price plus the debit paid. And for a long put butterfly spread, the lower break-even price is going to be the short strike minus the width of the long put spread minus the debit paid. So that's essentially the short strike of the long put butterfly minus the max profit of that long put spread. Now the estimated probability of profit for a long butterfly spread is potentially greater than 50% for really wide butterflies. Now that's because if you trade a really wide butterfly spread, the position will act more like a short straddle, and as we know, a short straddle has an estimated probability of profit of around 50 to 60%. Now if you trade narrower butterflies, which is probably going to be the more common case, then the probability of profit is estimated to be less than 50%. And that's just because with a narrow butterfly, you're going to have a very narrow range of profitability. Now the resulting position after expiration for butterfly spreads first depends on if you're trading a call or put butterfly, and then it also depends on if the spread is entirely in the money or partially in the money. So let's start with call butterflies. So here are the resulting stock positions for a partially in the money long call butterfly. So if you have one long call in the money, then that position is going to expire to plus 100 shares of stock at expiration. Now if you have one long call and two short calls that are in the money, that one long call and one short call will offset each other, but you have that additional short call that's in the money, which will expire to negative 100 shares of stock. Now for a long put butterfly, if only one long put is in the money, that option will expire to negative 100 shares of stock, and if you have one long put and two short puts that are in the money, that one long put and one short put will offset each other, but then that one additional short put will expire to plus 100 shares of stock. Now I know this is confusing, but just bear with me and we'll go through some examples to really hammer home all of these points. Now in regards to assignment risk, recall that a long butterfly spread has two short options that are in the middle of the spread. 
So for deep in the money long call butterflies, the trader is at risk of being assigned on the two short calls, which means that the assignment risk is negative 200 shares. Now for a long put butterfly that is deep in the money, the trader is at risk of being assigned on the two short puts, which means that the assignment risk is plus 200 shares of stock. So keep in mind that if your long butterfly spread gets deep in the money and those short options have very little extrinsic value remaining, you should be aware that there's potential to be assigned early on those short options. All right, now that we've gotten through all of the general strategy characteristics for call and put butterflies, let's go ahead and look at a hypothetical long call butterfly from the following option chain. Now for the remainder of this video, we're just gonna focus on long call butterflies just to keep things simple. So in this example, let's say the stock price is currently $300 and we wanna put on a long butterfly position. So to do this, we're going to buy the 250 call, sell two of the 300 calls, and buy one of the 350 calls. So we're essentially buying the 250, 300 call spread and selling the 300, 350 call spread. Now that's going to result in a net debit of $27.06. So based on that net debit, let's go ahead and look at the expiration risk profile graph for this long butterfly position. All right, so as we can see here, the most we can lose on this trade is the debit we paid, which is $27.06, times 100, which is $2,706. Now the most we can make on this spread is the width of the long call spread, which is 300 minus 250, or $50, minus the debit we paid, which is $27.06, times 100, which comes out to $2,294. So again, we take that long call spread width of $50, subtract the debit paid, and multiply that by 100 to get our maximum profit potential. So as we can see here, the max profit potential occurs when the stock price is right at the short call strike price of 300. Now that's because if the stock price is right at $300, those two short calls will expire worthless, the 350 long call will expire worthless, and that long 250 call will be worth $50. So the net value of the long butterfly spread at expiration will be $50. And since we paid $27.06 for it, then we have a profit of $22.94 overall, which if we multiply by 100, gives us our maximum profit potential of $2,294. So as we can see here, our break-even prices are $277.06 and $322.94. Now that the lower break-even price of 27706 comes from the long call strike price of 250 plus the debit paid of 2706 which comes out to 27706. Now that's because if the stock price is at 27706 at expiration, the two short 300 calls will expire worthless, the long 350 call will expire worthless, but that long 250 call will be worth $27.06, which is exactly what we paid for the entire butterfly. Now on the upside, our break-even price is $322.94. Now why is that? Well, if we deconstruct this long call butterfly spread, we learn that it's a combination of a 250-300 long call spread and a 300-350 short call spread. So if the stock price is at $322.94, that long 250-300 call spread is going to be worth its maximum value of $50. However, that short 300-350 call spread is going to be worth $22.94. Now at any point in time, to get the value of the long call butterfly spread, you can take the value of the long call spread and subtract the value of the short call spread. So if the stock price is $322.94 at expiration, the long call spread will be worth $50 and the short call spread will be worth $22.94 which brings our long call butterfly price to $50 minus $22.94, which comes out to $27.06. And since we initially paid $27.06 for this butterfly spread, we break even. Now the most we can lose is the debit paid, which is $27.06 or $2,706 per long call butterfly spread. Now that maximum loss occurs if the stock price is below our long call strike price of $250, or above our upper long call strike price of 350. Now that's because if the stock price is below 250, then every single one of these calls will expire worthless and we'll obviously lose the debit we paid. Now if the stock price is above 350, that long 250-300 call spread will be worth 
and that short 300 350 call spread will also be worth fifty dollars so remember that I said that at any point in time you can calculate a butterfly spreads value by subtracting the value of the short spread from the value of the long spread now if the long call spread is worth fifty dollars and the short call spread is also worth fifty dollars then subtracting that short call spreads value from the long call spreads value brings us to zero dollars so if the stock price is above 350 the butterfly spread will be worth zero dollars and will obviously again lose the debit we paid which is 2706 now let's go ahead and talk about a long butterfly's Greek exposures before moving on to the specific trade examples now keep in mind that the following Greek exposures assume that the stock price is near the short strike if the stock price is not near the short strike and perhaps is closer to one of the long strikes then these Greek exposures may not apply so first and foremost the delta value of a long butterfly spread will typically begin near zero if you're buying if you're selling an at the money strike price and purchasing equidistant long strike prices however as the stock price moves around the trade will become slightly directional now the gamma of a long butterfly position is negative now that's because when the stock price rises above the short strike the long butterfly becomes slightly short as its position delta becomes negative and when the stock price falls below the short strike a long butterfly position becomes more long because its position delta will be more positive now this should make intuitive sense because you want the stock price to be right at your short strike at expiration so naturally if the stock price increases to a value higher than the short strike price then you want the stock price to come down and that's represented by your negative delta conversely if the stock price falls below the short strike price you want the stock price to increase back to your short strike price and that's represented by your positive delta now in regards to theta decay a long butterfly spread will have positive theta now that's because if the stock price is right at your short strike price those short at the money options will have more value to lose than the out of the money and in the money long options and therefore you'll be collecting the extrinsic value of those options as time passes now in regards to Vega a long butterfly position has negative Vega and that's because an increase in implied volatility results in the contraction of a butterfly price which is bad for long butterfly trades and a decrease in implied volatility results in an expansion of butterfly prices which is good for long butterfly traders because you are you want the, the price of the spread to increase now this should make intuitive sense because let's say you initiate a long call butterfly spread and the stock price is right at your short strike if implied volatility increases that means that there's a larger expected movement for the stock price in the future and therefore a lower probability that the stock price will remain at your short strike and as a result the long butterfly spread will become cheaper now on the other hand if the stock price is right at your short strike and implied volatility collapses then that means there's a smaller expected move for the stock price in the future and therefore there's a higher probability that the stock price will be between your long strikes and closer to your short strike and the butterfly spread will get more expensive which is exactly what you want so all in all a long butterfly spread profits when the stock price remains near the short strike as time passes and that's represented by the positive theta and a long butterfly spread can also make money from a contraction in volatility as that'll cause a long butterfly spreads value to increase now the way a long butterfly spread loses money is if the stock price makes a significant move in either direction or if implied volatility increases alright now let's get into the fun stuff and look at some example trades so example trade number one will look at a butterfly that breaks even so here's the setup the initial stock price is 105.79 and to construct our call butterfly we're going to buy the 98 call, sell two of the 106 calls, and we're going to buy one of the 114 calls. Now all of these options expire in 45 days. So to repeat that, we're essentially long the 98 106 call spread and short the 106 114 call spread. Now we're going to pay a net debit of $3.60 for this. Now that means our lower break even price is the lower call long call strike price of $98 plus the debit of 360 which comes out to 10160 and our upper break even price is the short strike price of 106 plus the $8 wide call spread minus the $3.60 debit which comes out to 1 110.40 
Now the maximum profit potential on this particular butterfly trade is $440. Now that comes from the $8 wide long call spread minus the $3.60 debit times 100. Now since we paid a $3.60 debit for this trade, the most we can lose is $360. So let's go ahead and see what happens to this butterfly trade over time. All right, so in the top part of this graph, we're looking at the changes in the stock price relative to our long call butterfly strikes and break even prices. So as we can see, we're short two of the 106 calls, and that's where we want the stock price to remain through the, through the options expiration. So on the bottom part of this graph, we're actually looking at the price changes of that long call butterfly spread. So as we can see here, as the stock price remains near the short strike as time passes, we can see that the butterfly actually increases in value, which means we do have some profits. However, at expiration, the stock price is right above our upper break-even price of 110.40, and that means we have a very small loss on this long call butterfly spread. So at expiration, we have a long 98 call and two short 106 calls that are in the money. So one of those 98 long calls and one of the short 106 calls will offset each other in terms of um, exercises and assignments of stock positions, but we do have one short call that is not covered by any long options, and therefore if we held this position through expiration, we would be short 100 shares of stock. So if we did not want a short stock position after expiration, we would have to close that one short call, but it would be more advisable to just close the entire butterfly spread as if you let any options expire in the money, your brokerage firm will likely charge you exercise and assignment fees. So in this example, if we didn't want a short stock position after expiration, we would have to sell that long call spread and then buy back that additional short call. All right, trade example number two. We're going to look at a maximum loss butterfly. So here is the setup. The initial stock price is $74.44. And our long call butterfly is going to consist of a long 70-75 call spread and a short 75-80 call spread. So we're long 170 call, short 275 calls, and long 180 call. Now all of these options expire in 67 days. Now for this spread, we're going to pay a net debit of $1.23. And that means our lower break even price is going to be $71.23 and our upper break even price is going to be 7877. So our maximum profit potential is the width of the long call spread, which is $5, minus the debit we paid, which is $1.23, times 100, which comes out to $377. Now our maximum loss potential in this case is the debit paid of $1.23 times 100, which is $123. So, let's go ahead and see what happens to this position over time. All right, so as we can see here, the stock price starts right around $75, and over time, the stock price rises to about $85 at the highest point, and then expires just above our long call strike price of $80. So this means that at expiration, our long 70-75 call spread is entirely in the money, but our short 75-80 call spread is also in the money. So since that long call spread will be worth $5, and that short call spread will also be worth $5, the net value of this butterfly at expiration is $0. So since we paid a $1.23 debit for this trade, we would have incurred the maximum loss potential. Now if we let this entire butterfly spread expire in the money, we wouldn't end up with any long or short stock, but we would, we would be charged exercise and assignment fees by our brokerage firm. So that is something to keep in mind. Most of the time, depending on how many contracts you're trading, it'll often be cheaper to close the butterfly as opposed to be charged for the exercise and assignment fees. However, if you're, tra if you're trading a high number of contracts, so for example, if you have 30 of these butterflies on, it will often be cheaper to just let the butterfly expire in the money and just be charged the exercise and assignment fees as those would be cheaper than paying for each contract to close the trade. All right, in this last example, we're gonna look at a high profit butterfly. So here's the setup. The initial stock price is $752, and to create our long call butterfly spread, we're gonna buy the 700 750 call spread and sell the 750 800 call spread. Now all of these options expire in 46 days. Now for this butterfly, we're gonna pay a net debit of $10.55, 
and this brings our lower break even price to 710.55 and our upper break even price to 789.45 now our maximum profit potential for this particular trade is going to be the long call spread width of fifty dollars minus ten dollars and fifty five cents which is the debit we paid times 100 which comes out to three thousand nine hundred and forty five dollars so this long butterfly is really no joke now the max loss potential is the debit paid times 100 which comes out to one thousand and fifty five dollars so let's go ahead and see what happens to this butterfly position over time alright so in this example we can see that the stock price starts right around seven hundred and fifty dollars which is our short call strike price and unfortunately the stock price craters all the way down to six hundred and seventy five dollars and as we can see there the butterfly spread actually didn't change that much fortunately and even more fortunately the stock price came back all the way from six hundred seventy five dollars and expired just below our short call strike price of seven fifty now at expiration the long call butterfly spread was worth around thirty five dollars now that basically means that the long 700 call expired worth $35 of intrinsic value. And that's because the short 750 calls expired worthless and the long 800 call also expired worthless. So the value of this butterfly at expiration stems entirely from the intrinsic value of that long 700 call. So since we bought the butterfly for around $10 and it expired to a value around $35, that represents a profit per butterfly of $25 and in dollar terms that equates to around twenty five hundred dollars per butterfly spread so this trade was actually a big win and is, is an example of how when you purchase a butterfly spread you want the stock price to be very close to your short strike at expiration now since that long seven hundred call is in the money at expiration and all the other options are out of the money and worthless this position would expire to plus 100 shares of stock. So if you did not want a long stock position after expiration, you'd have to go ahead and sell that 700 call for whatever it was trading for at expiration, which in this case is around $35. So either way, you still end up with the same profit at expiration, but you avoid automatically being exercised into a long stock position that you would have if you held that 700 call through expiration. Alright, so let's go ahead and wrap this video up with a summary of main concepts. So first and foremost, buying butterflies is a limited risk, neutral trading strategy that consists of simultaneously purchasing a call or a put spread while also selling a call or put spread that share the same short strike price. Additionally, all options are in the same expiration cycle and the two spreads must have the same width for the position to be a standard butterfly. Now the main profit drivers when buying butterflies are the passage of time and decreases in implied volatility when the stock price is near the short strike. Now lastly, be sure to pay attention to where the stock price is trading at expiration as a partially in the money butterfly will expire to a long or short stock position depending on the type of butterfly held. Whew, we made it. Thank you so much for watching everybody and if you would like to subscribe to this YouTube channel, please do so by clicking on that circle on the left hand side. And if you'd like to check out some more options trading strategy videos, go ahead and check out the playlist on the right hand side.